the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I love being a priest. I, I've only been a priest a little bit more than a year, so I think I'm allowed to stand up here and say that. Um, maybe again when I have some big anniversary and, and I'm old and can do what I want, I'll get to say that too. Um, but I love it because of what has been um, entrusted to me, uh, the prayers of the church and the sacraments of the church. Um, I love it even at sad and hard times. Um, some of you who've been here for a long time uh, know Barbara Hunter, um, and all of you should recognize that name because we pray for it each day. And she's, uh, she's very near the end of her life. Um, and I went there on Friday um, to pray with her um, and with her daughters um, and to say the prayer at the time of death. And she's, she's still alive as far as I know, as of last night, um, uh, gone a couple days past what the doctors expected, um, but sat with her and prayed with her and her sisters, anointed her head with oil. Um, and I love those kinds of times because they're such, um, especially folks near death, it's such a spiritually pregnant time, um, a time um, when the soul um, is soon to leave the body, um, and a time when uh, loved ones especially um, both are distressed um, but are open to the movements of God. Um, there's much grace to be found there, even in the midst of death. Um, also love, of course, visiting in the hospitals. And, and the happy times are good, too, seeing new babies born, preparing for baptism. Um, more than any of that, um, as a priest, I probably love celebrating the Eucharist. And this is a harder one um, to uh, explain to the world, because um, there are a whole bunch of good uh, secular reasons, right, to care for the dying and to visit the sick, and there are actually professionals who go and do that, um, counselors and uh, folks who work on the hospice teams, and they are, are great. Um, but I put the Eucharist with these things that I do, and really at the top of things that I do, and the only way to understand that um, is by faith, um, by faith that uh, this thing that we do up here at this altar um, and at the rail, um, is receive the body and blood of Christ, the very body that was broken on the cross, the very blood that was shed. Um, to get to the spiritual power of that, I almost have to fall back um, on those old evangelical songs. There's power in the blood. Um, some of you could probably go through the whole thing. I'm having to think of the other verses, but there's power in the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Um, and what's in that chalice is indeed that blood. And when we drink that blood and eat um, Christ's body, then we're receiving those benefits of Christ's death for us. Um, and in doing so, we're becoming one with Christ, right? Christ is coming to be with us. We're being drawn in to Christ. Um, and the other thing that, that, ha that happens in the Eucharist is that we're, in being drawn to Christ, we're drawn to each other, right? Um, I'm one with, I become one with Christ, and you become one with Christ, and you become one with Christ, and so we all become one with each other. And that makes the church. Uh, that makes the church um, able to do God's work in the world. That makes the church different than something like the Rotary Club, different than something uh, like, even like your family, um, because the church is the body of Christ, is Christ's hand and feet in the world, um, is Christ's, the salvation of God in Christ, um, in people and in gatherings in the world, and, and it's what, what a wonderful thing that is. Um, I recognize there are people, probably in this room, certainly who come to this church, um, that haven't caught that vision. Um, and to be honest, I, I even find that vision fleeting at times. Um, it's a hard thing to get your head around. It's um, and the sort of wonderful feelings that you wish would well up every time that you had Christ's body in your hands just aren't always 
there. Um, but would say to you and would say to myself, it is there, and to pray and to ask for that assurance that you need. Um, how we approach the Eucharist matters, right? That has to do with how we encounter it. Um, you know, if we do truly contemplate um, the terror and the glory and everything wonderful about Christ's death and what it is to us, um, you know, if we are truly seeking in our lives, desiring and, and working for greater love of God and neighbor, um, praying, studying the scriptures, uh, visiting the sick and all those things I'm, I'm just about to get to, um, you know, we are able to receive and, and, pers and perceive the fullness, right, of Christ's body and blood and, and all the wonderful um, realities of salvation contained there. I love being a priest because uh, it gives me holy work to do, spiritual work, um, work that not only is from God but has real power over the things of God, you know, power that's uh, even more powerful than the biggest gun they have at Fort Benning or the biggest bank account right around the corner. Um, and I really believe that. And all this is a preface uh, to a spiritual truth that's contained in today's gospel reading um, and a description of the holy work that God has for all of us, right? Whether a priest or a lay person, whether an old person or a young person. Then the righteous will answer Jesus. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. The hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the prisoner, there's a couple I'm missing, the naked, uh, and the stranger are Christ to us. We who have been brought into Christ's body continually through the Eucharist go out into the world to encounter Jesus Christ, that same man who comes to us and bread and wine, who came into the world 2,000 years ago um, in these poor people. And this also requires an act of faith, because the hungry and the sick and the stranger aren't apparently Jesus to us. Um, in fact, uh, they look like the opposite of Jesus. They often terrify us. We're afraid to visit the sick because we're afraid maybe of getting sick ourselves. That we too will one day likely get sick um, and die. Uh, when we see uh, the stranger, um, when we see the people who are often hungry or lacking clothing, uh, we're afraid that they might hurt us. Um, or maybe somewhere down lower, we're afraid that we might we could become poor ourselves. Uh, we're afraid that if we get to talking to one of those people they might ask of us, that they might ask something of us that we don't want to do, that they might make us uncomfortable. Um, and so what we've done, um, because we, we know that we're supposed to serve them, right? We've heard this voice. We've created um, some nice, uh, easy, kind of clean, institutional ways to serve them. Um, and so you can go to the soup kitchen, um, and this is a, a fine thing to do. Uh, you'll uh, get behind the counter and you scoop out your food, and if there's any trouble, there's someone else they've paid to deal with that trouble, and maybe they've prepared the food for you, and you can get on your way, um, and you can check that box off for the month. Uh, if you're in high school, you can get the service hours written down, and just like uh, it's very easy to uh, come to church once a week or once a month or whatever your standard is and check it off and feel like a good person, you can do that too uh, with serving these people that Jesus calls himself. Um, and you can go through the motions and it's very, very nice. Um, 
But the implications of what Jesus said in this frankly terrifying gospel reading um, is that, no, these people are Jesus himself there, um, that we can meet Jesus in these people. Um, and the witness of the scriptures um, when it comes to Jesus uh, shows people offering him great hospitality, shows Mary Magdalene weeping and washing his feet with her tears and drying his feet with her hair. It shows people inviting Jesus to their homes um, to serve him lavishly and carefully and to, to tend carefully to him just to see what they might learn um, from this great teacher. Um, and I can tell you from experience, if you can start to make that move, and it's very hard um, the way that we do charity institutionally, just like it's uh, sometimes very hard to come to church uh, in the habit of coming to church and meet Jesus. Uh, but if you can engage the poor man or woman directly, and that's not just the homeless, that's also the sick in the nursing home, there's a broad, and, and frankly the stranger who comes here uh, that you don't know that, that might be sitting in your pew, um, it'll change your life, um, adding these relationships, especially with people different from you and people that you might be afraid of. Um, it'll make you more loving. It'll make you less afraid. Um, and God knows that we could do to be less afraid in this age that we live in. Um, we have a prayer breakfast here, we call it. Um, every Sunday morning, um, 7.30, 8 o'clock, 80 or so um, hungry men and women um, some who are homeless, some who live um, in public housing nearby, come to eat breakfast in our parish hall um, over there. Um, and the truth of them coming, um, the, the spiritual truth, the deep and powerful truth, is that Jesus is coming, that they are Jesus coming to us, uh, and that our call is to serve them like Jesus, um, and not just coldly and institutionally, um, but sitting down and talking with them. Uh, that, that would be my dream. We have a seven-week rotation, and I wish that everyone would sign up for two of them. And, uh, one week, they would do their serving, which we need, and the other week, they would sit down and talk with people and pray with people. And, uh, there are several uh, exemplary examples of that. We're not bereft of that kind of service here by any means, um, uh, but could always use more. To Titus this back up, um, I've tried to show that there's this vital link between what we're doing here, this celebration of the Eucharist and this serving of the poor, um, that the same Jesus who said, this is my body, this is my blood, um, also said, you do this unto me. That it's the same body that we're encountering in the Eucharist and encountering in uh, the poor man or woman. Um, and that there's even a dynamic, you know, of course, we're, we receive Christ's body and are sent from this place, right? Go, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Um, and the key part of that love and service is this service to the poor. And in fact, Jesus meets us there. We get his body and he says, go, and we go. And there's Jesus again um, in the hungry, thirsty, lonely, sick, imprisoned man or woman. And to come all the way back to the beginning, um, all of us have holy work to do. Um, and there is real power in that work, um, power that will change our lives, I mean, power that will change our life together and our community um, you know, when we're doing that personal work. It'll change, um, it'll change your politics. It'll change the way that you think about all the ways that we talk about the sick and talk about the poor. It, it can't help but... Um, do that. Um, and Jesus wants to meet us there. Um, Jesus uh, wants us, you know, when he says, we talk about Jesus being with us always, um, in important ways, they're with us, Jesus is with us in the people um, that we're called to serve. Um, and that is what lends meaning and significance and turns this thing we're doing here into something other you know, then that box you check out so that you can be uh, a good, respectable, uh, you know, southerner member of the Columbus community. Um, and so may we listen carefully 
um, to the call of Jesus and the poor, um, and the call of Jesus and the power of his salvation um, that's contained um, in those wonderful means of grace that he's given to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.